there. It showed for over a decade what had been going on there. There were the names of, of dozens and dozens of girls, the names of the men who were abusing them, the places they were being taken, where were they, they were being picked up. The evidence was there. It was there in internal police reports. It was there in social services documents. It was, A, this has been going on for this long, and B, you knew about it and you did nothing. And when we published that story, I was convinced there would just be an outcry that would lead immediately to all sorts of inquiries to try and understand what could possibly have gone so wrong. Were you met by a brick wall every time you tried to find out exactly what was going on at Rotherham? Rotherham Council tried to get a High Court injunction against us, South Yorkshire Police. Um, tried to prevent us from publishing the story that actually triggered this criminal inquiry. Um, Sat Rotherham Council tried to get a criminal investigation launched into who was supplying me with documents. In August 2013, we did what, what I've never done in my 26 years as a journalist, which is what, on the front page of the Times, we named a man, Arshid Hussain. We accused him of being a serial abuser of young girls. And this was a man who'd not even been questioned, let alone arrested or charged by the police at that stage. To have the evidence to, to persuade our lawyers that it was safe to do that meant that that evidence was completely overwhelming. Rotherham Council finally bowed to the pressure and commissioned what became the Jay Inquiry, an independent inquiry to look back through the books and understand what had happened. And as you know perfectly well, that made global headlines because she found that 1,400 girls had been abused over 13 years. So has justice been done? I know that for some of them, they never believed that this day would come where they would actually have sea charges initially brought against the men who had ruined their childhoods uh, and then have the chance to stand in court and tell a jury what had happened to them and critically to be believed and the jury believed those accounts. Some remarkable investigative journalism there from Andrew Norfolk. Well here at BBC Look North we say goodbye now to the BBC News Channel and viewers across the UK. Goodbye. Yes, uh, a special programme there that you've been watching uh, from our colleagues at uh, Look North in Yorkshire. Now it is uh, just after 10 to 7. Let's get all the sports news now for a full roundup from the BBC Sports Centre. Here's Oria Duba. Thanks, Clive. The outgoing FIFA presidents at Blatter and suspended UEFA boss Michel Platini have had bans from all football related activities upheld. Their suspensions, however, have been reduced from eight to six years by the Appeals Committee of Football's world governing body. With the FIFA presidential election going ahead as planned on Friday, anticipation is rising in Zurich, where we find our sports news correspondent Richard Conway. Well, this is FIFA's new museum in the heart of Zurich. It officially opens on Sunday, but the FIFA executives, well, they're getting a look around tonight inside. There's a bit of a shindig, a bit of a jamboree going on in there. They're going to have dinner and a bit of a champagne reception. Uh, so that's all happening here at the centre. But, of course, they're all looking forward to that election on Friday to, see, to elect a new FIFA president and, of course, to pass uh, some vital reforms. FIFA insiders saying it would be a disaster.